Hey everyone, so I am back, sort of, <laughs> I'm trying to get myself back into the swing of filming. Uh, you may notice that my hair is once again another colour. Um, so I've been sort of umming and ahhing about what to film next because I'm just kind of Having moved, I don't really know where to begin because everything's still in boxes. Half my plants aren't where I want them to be. I've been trying to just kind of recover some of them because we moved on a really hot day and there were some casualties. Although I don't think anything's died. I think um, we've just had some kind of like sick plants basically. So um, I was, I've been working. This is my office at the moment. Uh, <laughs> it's. I don't know, that's my desk, as you can see, lots of plants. Um, and I was kind of mulling over what to do today and I noticed that my Alocasia stingray is looking quite poorly. Um, and I kind of expected that, I bought him poorly. He was from a um, local garden centre and he was discounted down to £10. Um, and quite a big Alocasia stingray, they're normally sort of £25 um, for that size. So I kind of knew something was up with him, although I suspected it was most likely spider mites. So um, I treated him, this is probably about, I don't know, two months ago now. Um, so I just, my arm's getting tired. How do vloggers do this? <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that was probably two months ago now. And um, I, in that time, I've treated him with neem oil and um, dish soap and water um, as a spray quite regularly to try and get rid of any spider mites. Although I'm now thinking that it might have been thrips as he has definitely succumbed to thrips in a big way. Um, so at the time I thought, do you know what, <laughs> because he's got fungus gnats, he had all sorts of things living in the soil, I just thought I'm just going to um, try and transfer him into semi-hydroponics, um, aka Lekka, uh, or hydro Hydrolecca, or Hydrolecca, I don't know. Um, so uh, yeah, I've done that and he's recovered really well, he's been growing new leaves, he's been really happy, even though I haven't put any kind of fertiliser or anything, any kind of nutrients in the water, so he's doing really well. Um, until I noticed um, some kind of sickness. So I'm going to show you now so you can see. Um, and we are basically on war number two with the thrips because I overcame thrips the last time. So I at least know what to do now. Um, but we, yeah, we've, we've got a second outbreak folks. And um, rest assured, I am, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for this one. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna have to excuse the mess. Um, I've kind of got him uh, on this speaker so that he's not touching anything at the moment. Because from here, I mean, he looks pretty sad. Um, let's be honest, we've got the yellow leaf here. Uh, we've got the drooping leaves here. However, um, we've got some new leaves here. So he's not looking altogether terrible, um, but you can obviously see some sort of yellowing on these on these leaves here. But uh, if you look a bit closer, and I'm hoping this will show up on here. I don't know if you can see, but we've got some, some moving black insects. And those, my friends, are thrips. Um, so these are the adult thrips. So they're clearly kind of making a living on here. Um, and these are the thrip larva, um, sort of at the middle stage before they become adults and you can see some of the kind of black deposits on the leaf as well in between here um, which indicate that's kind of the feces slash whatever uh, the thrips are um, excreting so um, yeah as we look a bit closer um, we can see that this poorly plant is absolutely infested and even on the new little leaves there um, sorry I know this isn't the best light so if we go on to this slightly older looking leaf and the one that's got some yellow he's got all kinds of uh, thrip larva um, moving around on there, the little white dots wiggling around and uh, some thrip eggs as well. So, and we can see that on all of the leaves, so all of the leaves are infected. 
Um, this is a pretty bad infestation. Um, this leaf is not so bad, but it's, you know, it's definitely up there. And then if we go down to here, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty awful. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. I think that's pretty, a pretty good look at what Thrips looks like. Um, so you can see that there's some kind of fading around um, the leaf coloration. It's just, it's lost its color. Um, it's looking pretty sickly. It's, I don't know, this is, this is something that I often notice about when we, when we see, um, certain supposed new variegated monstera um, adansonii and that sort of thing they sort of have this like sickness type look to them and often it's mosaic virus sometimes it's spider mites sometimes it could be thrips so you know you always just want to make sure that you're looking at your plant um, and some people will tell you that um, putting your plant into hydroponics will kind of rid you of your pest issues but that's not really true um my problem with this plant is going to be the high hydrolecker or lecker or whatever you want to call it because i now don't have a soil surface to um put my remedy on <laughs> so let's uh one last look oh god look at that that's that's pretty damn terrible isn't it yep so what I am now going to do is I'm going to take the plant up to the shower or the bath, um, I'm not totally sure which one, um, and I think I'm going to spray it down with SB Invigorator because I've not had great success in the past with uh, neem oil and dish soap um, for thrips. Um, I usually use that for spider mites or for mealybugs. I don't find this particularly successful for either of those. Um, it, although, in fairness, I have only sort of used it in disaster case scenarios. So, you know, as a preventive method, I think it's pretty, pretty damn good because I don't get um, pests all that often. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take it, spray, it, spray down all the leaves, spray down the stems spray down everything I can um, and just keep him separate from all the rest of my plants for a few days because well forever potentially um, because I am worried about um, the rest of my plants I have bought a, a batch of Amblesius cucumeris from uh, my favorite pest control shop, <laughs> online shop. Uh, they're called dragonfly.co.uk. Uh, that's spelled dragon F-L-I um, as opposed to F-L-Y. <laughs> but anyway, I'll put it in the um, on the screen and in the description um, so you can visit it if you like. Um, basically, Amblesius cucumeris are a predatory mite. Um, they are, all, I think, almost too small to be seen by the naked eye. So um, they come in kind of like a shaker I'll show you when it arrives anyway but they come in a shaker um, with some kind of debris um, that just looks like like miniature bark chippings or something um, for the mites to cling to so that they actually have something to to be shaken on, on off I don't know um, so you will would shake a little pile onto the base of the stem of the plant which is where my problem comes along from these from this plant being in lecker um, but uh, you would also shake it onto the leaves so that the mites kind of get a good chance to go all over um, the plant so that's what I'm gonna do um, I'm not quite sure what to do about the lecker issue um, but yeah when people tell you that you can't get pests when you have your plant in lecker do not believe them because it's not true it's it's less likely that you're going to get pests because a lot of pests start their life cycle in the soil um but it does by no means protect you against these <laughs> um but yeah so i i think it's possible that it might be too late for this uh alocasia stingray but don't don't say it too loud because it's right there um <laughs> Sorry, um, but I will be treating all the rest of my plants in this room and probably just my whole collection preventatively just in case because chances are once you've got thrips on one plant you've got it on them all so um, yeah and I cannot 
deal with an outbreak right now. I just cannot. <laughs> I feel like 2020's given us enough and I just can't. <laughs> so, oh, who feels me? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go and spray this mother flipper down because he needs to be, if he's gonna be rescued, it's gotta be done ASAP. So, yep. Yeah. Wish me luck and I will be back when I receive the pest control in the post. Hey guys, I'm back. It's a different day. I now have my Thrip Killers, um, which is the Amblesius cucumeris that has come through the post and that has come from dragonfly.co.uk. Um, did they send me a note about how it works? Yes, they did. So, what they've said, they send this note about thrips with the lovely thrips on the front. <laughs> um, so they say, please use immediately upon receipt. I actually got this uh, two or three days ago, but there we go. We'll see. It should be fine because um, I've done that before and they are usually fine. It says required conditions, temperature range 10 to 30 degrees Celsius humidity 70% uh, lower humidity will not kill cucumeris but will make reproduction difficult so obviously you want to uh, make the situation as optimal as possible in order for them to uh, thrive and kill off the thrip larva so they've said before application carefully rotate bottle to evenly distribute predators through carrier material and lightly mist leaves with water so I am going to do that um, and then they say, application, once opened, apply all the material and do not store. Sprinkle material from above plants, focusing on damaged areas or where pests are present. If applying to rock wall blocks for young plants, apply in small piles of carrier material on the rock wall base. I don't really know what rock wall is. Do not use any insecticides once pred pred predators have been applied. So don't use your neem oil, don't use your SB invigorator or anything else. Uh, that will kill off your pests and then it says repeat applications may be required then they say next steps observe thrip levels over the next seven to ten days if using as a curative treatment apply more amblesius cucumeris or amblesius swirskii if pest levels and damage do not decrease or apply pre preventative rates of loose cucumeris or present why am I finding this hard? It's so hard to read. Or preventative sachets of cucumeris or swirskii to continue protection. And then they just have uh, dragonfly.co.uk along the bottom there. I, I don't think that's in reverse, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, so um, I'm going to do that. I will, uh, I'm not gonna show you the um, spraying the leaves because that's fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to do one room at a time, so um, I am going to tackle the room where I've had the thrips um, and go with that first. And then I will also do um, kind of preventative treatment on the other plants in our flat um, just to make sure that they don't also get it. So I will show you at least one, <laughs> at least one of the plants um, that I'm going to do. Um, the uh, uh, what's it called? The Alocasia stingray is currently in the shower. I'm really bad. Sometimes I don't know if anyone else gets this, so let me know if anyone else does get this. But when I have a plant that is just so overwhelmed with a pest or it's so close to death, I tend to just leave it to die. <laughs> um, and that's not like deliberately, it just seems to be like a mental block I have about actually doing something about it and sorting it. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I think I just, um, I don't know, it's like a procrastination thing. Um, I feel like it's gonna go downhill anyway and I don't want to waste all my time like caring for it and all this kind of stuff. But, um, but obviously for the more precious plants then um, I do make more efforts. But yeah, and no one likes having a thrip infestation, so um, he's been sitting in the shower and the cat has been staring at him quite a lot. <laughs> so um, I will get to him. I think it's just because he's in um, Lekka that I don't really know what to do. Um, 
Sorry, I'm having like a really bad hay fever reaction today. So um, if I sound like I've got a cold or like a blocked nose or just sound sedated, <laughs> it's because I've got hay fever. <laughs> um, yeah, give us a like if you uh, if you feel me, if you've got the same problem. Oh, it's bad at the moment, honestly, so bad. <laughs> okay, I am gonna arm myself with this pressure sprayer if you don't have one of these oh well that that was rubbish hold on <laughs> I think it's been slowly letting out its pressure okay so you pump it up like that and then you spray and it mists everything off all nicely um, I'm not actually going to do the spraying thing for my cacti because um, they're cacti so and the last time I did the thrips treatment it didn't seem to make a difference whether I sprayed or not so I'm not going to bother just letting you know <laughs> okay so we push this bit through how, how do we do that how do we do that my friends Well, one-handed, this is not going so well. One moment, defeated by a, a thrip killer thing. There we go. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh no, oh crap. Right, well. You didn't see that. I just hope the cat doesn't eat them. But it's okay because they're pet safe. So uh, yes, well now that it's there, that's basically what it comes in. It looks like little, almost like little grains of sand. Um, or like little bits of chip, like wood chip or something like that. So may as well stick that on there. I am just going to cover this over so that the cat can't get it. <laughs> Ugh, my life. Right, there he is, mischief. Okay, I'm just going to show you on this one plant just so that you get an idea of um, how to do the treatment. So which leaf should we go for? Now, the funny thing is, is that when you do pour the Trip treatment onto the leaves they tend to kind of fall off a bit but I'm gonna okay the lid fell off <laughs> damn it I think I've broken this thing but so basically because you've wet the leaf it can kind of sit on there so if you've got a really big infestation that would be what you would want to do for each of the leaves particularly the ones that are affected um, what I tend to do more of is Please excuse the mess around here. <laughs> Is I will go in and create a little mound at the base of each of the stems. This is precision filming it at its best. <laughs> Don't come for me. <laughs> so there we've got a little mound under each stem. Um, which basically means that the thrips can, uh, sorry, the thrip mites, the Amblesius cucumeris, can kind of climb up the plant. <laughs> um, so this is what I do for my preventative treatments because it's not quite so important that the leaves um, get the um, killer mites on them straight away. Um, we've got a little bit more time, but if you've got a plant that has got thrips on its leaves, it has a live infestation, then you probably want to be putting them onto the leaves as well to make sure that you've got a good uh, coverage of the killer mites. Um, so I am gonna do this to uh, the remainder of the leaves on this one because this was sitting right next to the um, alocasia. Uh, and the rest of my plants, I'll just do a few little mounds um, around the stem to prevent them from getting any kind of infestation. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but that's probably mostly it for today. So I will, um, yeah, I'll be back and update you how I got on with treating my 
thrips but yeah that's basically how you do it um i know that a lot of the time when i tell people about amblesia scupumaris and they're they're kind of like hesitant because they are an insect um or a mite um and it seems a bit kind of counterintuitive to add insects to insects in your home um, and also a little bit like unpleasant to um, introduce a load of pests into your well, not pests but a load of insects into your home um, as you can see from this you can't really see them you can see kind of the the medium that they are attached to but you can't see any thrip killer mites um, I'm just looking now I can't see anything I am slightly blind though so Excuse me. I am slightly blind though, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything. <laughs> but I haven't ever yet seen anything crawling around, so just to assuage your fears. <laughs> hey everyone, so I just got finished um, editing this video and realised that I didn't finish it. So um, I just want to say thank you for watching and um, let me know in the comments what your favourite thrip treatment is. I will definitely uh, give an update at some stage that might be in another video um, about thrips or it might just be at the end or the beginning of another video, um, depending on what happens, if we improve <laughs> or if we don't improve. Uh, although I have a lot of faith as I've obviously used Amblesia's Cucumeris before um, and it works pretty pretty damn well <laughs> um, so yeah let me know uh, what your thrip treatment or control of choice is um, if you've had to deal with it in the past and I obviously hope that you don't but if you do have thrips um, definitely check out dragonfly.co.uk um, and Blasius Cucumeris I will put a link in the description so you can find that nice and easily um, and let me know how it goes for you um, I hope this is helpful and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, uh, be sure to give us a like uh, and subscribe if you want to, it's free. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.